Welcome to Keeping History on Two Wheels. If you like this video, please hit the subscribe button. It's right over here. Don't forget to hit that bell so that you'll be notified whenever we do an upload. Today, we're in South Carolina. Actually, we're just outside of Charleston, South Carolina at the Charles Pickney National Historic Site. So come along with us while we learn about not only Charles Pickney, but also the plantation and the Constitution of the United States. Charles Pinckney was born into a prominent Charleston family on October 26, 1757. His father, a wealthy planner and attorney, was commanding officer of the local militia, member of the General Assembly, and president of the state's Provincial Congress. Young Charles received his basic schooling from David Oliphant, a noted South Carolina scholar who emphasized history, the classics, political science, and languages. Growing political unrest with Great Britain disrupted Charles's plan to attend school in England. He ended up staying home and studying law with his father. In 1779, during the Revolutionary War, Pinckney represented Christ Church Parish in the State Assembly. As a lieutenant in his father's militia regiment, he took part in the attempt to retake Savannah from the British. The next year, after the British captured Charleston, Pinckney and his father were imprisoned along with other American officers. The elder Pinckney was freed after swearing allegiance to the British crown, which saved the Pinckney estate. Charles, however, wasn't released until June 1781. In 1784, Pinckney became a delegate to the Congress, then meeting in Trenton, New Jersey, and in May 1787, along with his cousin Charles Coatsworth Pinckney, Pierce Butler, and John Rutledge, he represented the state at the Constitutional Convention in Philadelphia. Due in large part to his efforts, South Carolina ratified the new Constitution on May 23, 1788. In April 1788, Pinckney married Mary Eleanor Lawrence, and they eventually had three children. Over the next 10 years, he held a variety of political offices, including the president of the South Carolina State Constitutional Convention, governor of South Carolina, and was a U.S. Senator. Early on, the Pinckneys supported the Federalist ideology. By 1795, Charles had come to view the Federalist as the party of the rich and well-born. He joined with Thomas Jefferson's Democratic Republicans, championing the interests of the rural Americans over those of the coastal elite. During the presidential campaign of 1800, Pinckney was Jefferson's South Carolina campaign manager. Jefferson rewarded Pinckney with an ambassadorship to Spain. During that time, he helped facilitate the acquisition of Louisiana from France and tried unsuccessfully to get Spain to cede Florida to the United States. Pinckney returned to South Carolina in January 1806 and served briefly in the General Assembly before being elected to his fourth and final term as governor. 1806 to 1808. In 1818, after a final term in the legislature, 
and a brief retirement from active political life, he was elected to the U.S. Congress, from which he retired in 1821. Pinckney spent his final years in Charleston, where he died on October 29, 1824, at the age of 67. He had devoted 42 years to serving community, state, and nation. He is buried at the St. Philip's Episcopal Church in Charleston. In Philadelphia, Pinckney became a familiar leader speaking more than 100 times on the various issues facing the body. Of note were his strong beliefs in protecting property interest and establishing a strong federal government with a clear separation of powers. Pinckney was concerned with forming a government that would represent the rights of the people. Pinckney believed in the separation of church and state and in religious freedoms. At the time, Nine of the 13 colonies maintained an established church which was either Anglican, Dutch Reformed, or Congregationalist. How many thousands of subjects of Great Britain at this moment labor under the civil disabilities merely on account of their religious persuasions, exclaimed Pinckney in a speech to members of the Continental Congress. The proposal passed easily and found itself in Clause 3 of Article 6 of the Constitution. When the issue of slavery arose, however, Delegate Pinckney stood among his fellow Southerners in defense of the institution. He openly questioned the assertion of that slavery was wrong, stating, If slavery is wrong, it is justified by the example of all the world, in all ages. One half of mankind have been slaves. He also stated that South Carolina would reject the Constitution if the document prohibited the transatlantic slave trade. On May 29, 1787, Pinckney presented his own draft of the Constitution. Unfortunately, this document was lost. A draft of the Pinckney Plan was found among the papers of James Wilson from Pennsylvania, which permitted constitutional scholars J. Franklin Jameson and Andrew C. McLaughlin to reconstruct Pinckney's plan. When in 1818, James Madison wrote Pinckney, requesting a copy of his original draft, Pinckney did not have it, and thus provided Madison with another copy he believed was substantially the same. This resulted in a major controversy concerning Pinckney's contributions to the final draft of the Constitution. Nevertheless, scholars today attribute approximately 28 clauses to Pinckney. His major contributions were the elimination of religious testing as a qualification for office, the division of legislature into the House and Senate, the power of impeachment being granted only to the House, the establishment of a single chief executive who will be called the president, the power of raising an army and a navy being granted to Congress, the prohibition of states to enter into a treaty or establish interfering duties, the regulation of interstate and foreign commerce being controlled by the national government. Further contributions Pinckney made to the convention and to the Constitution may never really be known, but it is obvious he contributed significantly to the proceedings, earning the nickname Constitution Charlie. After the signing of the Constitution in September of 1787, Pinckney returned home and once again become active in state politics. The same year, the College of New Jersey, now Princeton University, conferred its doctorate of law degree to Pinckney.
for watching the video. If you liked it, go ahead and hit the subscribe button right over here. It's right down here. Go ahead. I'll wait on you. What are you waiting on? Hit it. Don't forget to hit that bell so that you'll be notified whenever we do an upload. And always remember, every trip starts with a step, and that step, well, it starts with you.